Hey guys, Tiefel here. Today we're going to be talking about the Tier 6 German battleship, the Gneisenau. Gneisenau. I feel like I got German-speaking people telling me both pronunciations. You can see I run on Von Hipper there. I'm basically running Von Hipper on all my German battleships, Bismarck included. That would be my recommendation at this point in time. But I'll probably do a secondary Bismarck build video at some point, and we can go over the pros and cons of that approach. I got two games here, both of them on Neighbors. The, for, the first one's kind of a short and sweet uh, video. They're both kind of brawly games, which tends to be how the Gneisenau performs the best. But I thought I'd... Sh this ship is a really... Uh, its reputation is to be really inaccurate, and some people on my Discord were saying how wildly inaccurate it was prior to me unlocking it so I was a little bit nervous now you do have three guns or three turrets two guns each so six guns that exas exacerbates the the perception of it being inaccurate compared to like a Fuso which is also inaccurate per gun but if you have like 12 guns firing at once you know you're more likely to hit something but I'll show you right here my first shot I ever took in this thing <laughs> I just cut into this game on Escher very quick you know, I just unlock the ship, checking it out, thinking, oh, let's see how inaccurate this thing really is, and then I fire that shot, and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, this thing sucks. <laughs> but you'll notice I didn't have the target selected there, so that was operator error. If you don't know, if you don't have the circle surrounding the ship's icon, your accuracy is going to be greatly diminished on whatever ship you're in, but... <laughs> Thought that was kind of funny. I was just like, hey, "You got an alpha, all right? This ship really is wild." But anyway, um, you'll see throughout these. Um, you can play it at long range if you want. It's not. It's German battleship accuracy. Now von Hipper, spec'd out with Cunningham as an inspiration, which is how I would recommend doing it to minimize the wildness of the guns. That kind of cuts down on the problems here. Obviously, this Benson's waiting for me. I'm going to cut the speed and try and eliminate him. We do have secondaries going off. I figure there he clipped me with one. That was cool. But <laughs> he did end up giving me with a few of them, which is fine. Comparing this to the Sharn Horse key differences, this has about 2,000 more HP. The guns are 380s compared to 283s. Now, the Sharn Horse layout is 3x3. Three three. This is 3x2. Range on on the Sharn Horse significantly longer, almost two kilometers on my builds, but neither of these ships should really be played at max range. They're not really effective there. Sharn Horse, six seconds less on the reload. Uh, better turret traverse by about, looks like eight and a half. Uh, the HE damage on Gneisenau is 1,200 more. Fire chance, 14% more. AP damage, about four, almost four and a half thousand more. Torps the exact same. You got two by threes and 68 second reload, six kilometer range, 64 knots in the water. Speeds are good on both. Gneisenau is actually faster, kind of to my surprise, it's just shy of 30. The Sharn Horse, the 28. Um, but the other mobility characteristics favor the Sharn Horse. Turn radius, 830 on this compared to 800 and rudder shift 12 and a half compared to 12.3 so very similar ships but the Sharn horse is kind of set up more cruiser-esque I guess in terms of guns and reload and stuff like that but they do feel similar here now if you see Gneisenau's kind of <laughs> at this angle what they're trying to do is torp you I'm kind of holding them at the lat till the last second here it's I don't think he could dodge those even if I'd launched them right when he entered the threshold where I could shoot him there, but I wanted to make sure and eliminate him. Now you'll see here I do have the speed cut all the way, and I'm attempting to use this dead ship here as blocking just in case this enemy had torps in the water. Now he is currently out of my range, but that's not to say he could not have launched them. So I don't think people often consider the fact that you can use those ships. Torpedo blocking for sure, I think that's the most useful, but you can also block some shots, kind of use it as like a really low mini island. It can also block your own shots too, keep that in mind, but, you know, it, it's something to consider. It's 
like I say, it's kind of a, I don't want to say a high level play, it's not that advanced, but it's a lot of, it's something that a lot of people wouldn't consider. Now, obviously I'm not going to live the, past this, I mean the Colorado, you can see there, even properly angled, that's about as well as you can angle this ship, he's able to punch through. What you want to be doing, if you can see these ships, like the guys in all, most battleships have this kind of horizontal line that runs through their hull. Below it is the belt armor, above it is the non-belt armored section. And guys and all, the turtleback actually works on like a couple of the other battleships <coughs> that um, people were really excited about. Bismarck and Turbots. But this thing I don't think I've ever really sit about. It's not really worth shooting at waterline. You can maybe get the sit at really long range when you get the plunging fire, but short to medium range, just shoot upper half of the hull. You're going to hit some above the belt armor. The ones that hit the belt armor aren't as likely to do much. And then you'll get some incidental shots into the superstructure, which again does some damage. So both of those are effective. And that's where I typically shoot at the Gneisenau, regardless of what ship I'm in. So you can see there, even though we had a quick exit, that was still pretty decent in terms of score. Now we did lose, so the XP on paper doesn't seem that good. But Anyway, here's another look at Neighbors. This time we have the center spawn. Now I talked about playing the center position with the battleship on my latest Sims membership video, for those of you who watched that. It's going to depend on the situation that unfolds here. A lot of times I consider the northeast side of this map more valuable because you have those islands that can potentially provide cover and will, you know, allow you to kind of outplay the ships that are pushing in from the southwest. That's a little bit less relevant on capture the base mode compared to domination mode because there's no intrinsic need for them to push to the northeast so you do have to keep that in mind. So in this game right now. I'm just attempting to anchor down the center position as best I can. And we've got some shots at some cruisers here and other targets potentially. But you'll see as this game unfolds we're able to kind of use this center position and exert our influence throughout the entire map. If you look at the firing radius on the ship, if you do get centri centrally located, you can ex essentially exert your you know, influence over the vast majority of the map, so it is something to keep in mind here. And the Shine Horse you see to take a pot shot of, but because he's got the low caliber guns, and I'm not a hundred, you know, all that worried about him. The Shine Horse, a lot of times, unless they're really aware of where they should be aiming, they're going to be more effective just kind of firing HE at longer ranges. Now, a lot of times, the Shine Horse, I'll personally use AP, but then again, we're just aiming upper half of the ship, so. But he does poke out. I was inclined to kind of maybe swing my ship around and start firing to the south, but because he did poke out there, we took a shot. And here you're going to see some of the accuracy or lack thereof on the ship. It's really RNG based. Again, these six guns, you just never know what you're going to get. I mean, when they hit, they do hit really hard and they can penetrate a lot of armor plating. So battleships or any ship in particular, you do need to be concerned if the Gneisenau is shooting at you, but, you you know, chances are they're not going to be accurate, at least at long range. But especially if you close in on these things, that's a dangerous situation. So if you're playing against Gneisenaus, typically if you can control the distance and keep them at long range, they're going to be relatively ineffective. Now here's kind of the situation I was talking about. Because we've driven off the center spawn, they've gone to the northeast, we're able to move forward a little bit. Now you do need to be careful playing this position. You need to be aware constantly of both flanks and keeping an eye on who's likely targeting you, who's the biggest threat in terms of gun power, and also looking for opportune targets. So I wouldn't re necessarily recommend pushing into the center like this in a battleship unless you're really confident in your map awareness, but you'll see how I attempt to play this. Now, I was inclined to swing around again to kill that Myoko, which was just eliminated, but again, the Sharn Horse continues to poke through and stay broadside to me, so we're just going to keep firing at him 
as the situation warrants. Now, I'm not massively concerned about my armor angling. You can say that's probably a bit of a mistake here, especially due to the fact that my southward threats are, at least for the moment, non-existent. I mean, we do have some more ships popping up at our far end of the firing range, but the Sharon Horse is the primary threat. But again, because I'm not using this guy as a meat shield necessarily, but he is there, so he's occupying that guy's attention. I didn't... I wasn't punished for not being properly angled. Now the Sharn Horse closing in, you need to understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to get him to Torp range. So you see I boost the throttle all the way up. Now it's going to take a little bit to get going, but now we are better angled. We could even go a little bit steeper here. But what The range on the Torps is 6, but because I'm moving away from them, my effective range from him, his launchers, and they were able to pop a gun, which again... Is something you want to be doing on these close range brawling situations with battleships. But my effective torpedo range from him were probably seven to eight kilometers on his torpedo indicator. Whereas I can torp him at will. He's probably, you know, four or three and a half, whatever it is, because he's closing in on me. So you always got to keep in mind when you're torpedoing people who are sailing away from you, it's very hard to do. And, you know, it's, it's not something you should be relying on. And again, you know, now I'm pretty well angled. I'm looking at that diagram at the bottom. I'm happy with how that is. But we're just keeping the distance. I don't want to stop here and let him torp because that's pretty clearly what he's trying to do. Now, if you saw where I aimed those torps, I just did it slightly to the right of where the aim indicator was. I was expecting him, once he got within range, to turn to his left, which would have opened up that rearward right-hand torpedo launcher. So... I didn't do it too far to the too far to the right because had you know had he not turned at all because we kept the distance going, we still were gonna catch him with the left hand side of that salvo. But had he turned, we probably would have caught him with just the right hand side of the salvo. So that was kind of playing a percentage play where I'm trying to get at least one or two torps on him, and that play that ended up working. So we eliminated that threat. Now once that's concluded, you got to evaluate the map, see what's available. The, the targets to the south that are easily identifiable, i.e. the non-destroyers, have all been eliminated, so there's no real reason for me to go down there. We do have these three ships that are sailing away from our northeastern flank, so because they're sailing away from them, they're all pointing their broadsides with us, and that's just going to give us easy access to some shots. And again, you know, these are relatively longer range shots so you'll be able to see the varying degrees of accuracy you get and again it's just kind of a dice roll sometimes you're going to get nice tight groupings i mean that one looks serviceable to me sometimes i get a little bit wilder and there's just that's just part of playing german battleships in general and get nice now again because of the low gun count on it it just seems to be as exacerbated but in reality it's just the fewer guns appear to be less accurate. Now once um, I could finish off that Nuremberg, that might be the proper play, but shooting Atlantis is God's work. <laughs> so <laughs> once he pops up and I identify him as being at Atlanta, he's going to be kind of my primary focus here. Now I should basically maintain my angle with these guys and then just swing my guns over to that destroyer. I'm, tar I'm calling them out for my teammates, um, hoping they're going to come to their senses and shoot him. But usually your teammates are either completely blind to the fact that the destroyer is the biggest threat to the team. We're up a ship. I mean, this game is not over by any means. And the destroyer, especially killing off some of these battleships, which are less likely to be able to defend themselves, th this thing can turn very quickly. So... Rather than pinging that destroyer for myself, I just need to stay angled to these ships, which are the gun threats to my ship, and point the guns to the destroyer. I, for some reason, he keeps popping up. You know, he's trying to get within torp range. It might be an unupgraded Fubuki that is, for, you know, before you un upgrade the torps on the Fubuki, you have to actually get detected before you can launch them. So I'm guessing that's probably what's going on with this guy unless he's really just misplaying this. There's no reason for him to be repeatedly becoming detected before us other than that, so...
that's probably what's going on. But again, I'm just hoping my team's doing it. And that's, it's just a mistake, you know. Even though the Gnai's an inaccurate ship, not the best destroyer killer knowing a man. It, you know, you basically just, as an aware player, which all of you are or are becoming because you're taking the time to learn, you just got to realize that you're playing with a lot of players that aren't as aware as you are, and then you need to just take responsibility. Shooting destroyers, de turning around defending bases, things like this that are required to win games. You gotta... Yeah, it's not my job as a Gnaiz now to kill the destroyer. I'm the worst ship on the team to do that. But it's my job to do that because I'm the only one that frankly understands the importance. This guy can single-handedly win the game for his team, you know, if it wasn't upgraded. Torp Fubuki, you know, there's no reason why that thing, even if he doesn't kill us all, he can screw up our team hard enough to either win on points or even the fight for his teammates and allow them to kill us off, so, misplay there and I, you just need to reiterate re re this point, ping this guy all you want, it's finally occurring to me, alright, enough's enough. <laughs> You know, but th this should have happened three, four minutes ago. I could have gotten multiple selves off. Either scared him off, and you'll see right there. That's why I was reluctant to do it, because that's the result at that range that you're likely to get. But regardless, um, word of the wise, that, that was something I should have been doing. Well, we do have the Baron closing in here now. He needs to be expecting these torps. I think he's... Well, he is shooting at me, so clearly he's... <laughs> gotten his attention my way so I don't know why he might have just forgotten that I had Torbs or has lost the will to live I don't know what it was maybe he's just focused on trying to kill me but that was a fairly easy Torb salvo and again with the Gnais now with the Sharn horse those ships you're gonna want to ideally Torp at the closest range possible just because your mobility isn't there to you know, maneuver or counter maneuver against defensive maneuvers that anyone else on the team is doing, but situations like that, you know, you just gotta launch them and hope for the best. We did land the shot. Do have the secondaries going off, the legendary German secondaries. You can see they don't actually do anything. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna get some fires. You might get some incidental damage here and there. And I hope people aren't getting annoyed that went all in on their secondary builds that I'm kind of making a little bit of fun of the German secondaries. I mean, they're, they're just kind of a like a bonus or a, a frill of the ship line. They definitely don't hurt anything, but you can see the actually of this ship. I did play some Ciliac games just to test it out, and it was frustrating. I don't think I bothered to record any of them. Initially, I was planning on recording one Ciliac, one Von Hipper game, for comparison's sake, but... I'm pretty sure that neither. I'm pretty sure that both of these were von Hipper. I just don't recall playing more than two or three Silex just because it was quite annoying and really not worth the effort. So if you do have both commanders and you have the option, I would go with von Hipper on this one for sure. But that's it for this one in terms of action. We're capping now. You can see the destroyer. I just want to point this out, even though it's not a consequential play. But the destroyer just peered around the island briefly. And so, once I'm undetected, I know he's where he is. He's behind that island. Now, because he's detected again, 75% chance he's on the left, 25% chance he's on the right, okay? Maybe a smart destroyer play would, or player would have turned back around to the right with the intention of, you know, throwing off the scent. But what I'm doing right now is I'm baiting the Torps, trying to give him a fairly broadside target to shoot at. Again, I'm fairly certain that he's to the left here. So I, I stayed broadside of those torps to make it really enticing for, you know, 10, 15 seconds, whatever it is. Then I turned into where I thought he was probably launching them, which would, would have been this point. And that's going to make it easier for me to dodge if he does pop up. And there he does pop up, but before we can shoot the game ends. So just a little bit of a psychology behind dodging torps. You just have to kind of put yourself in the destroyer's shoes and think of where they're going to be. So that's it for this one. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. A lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, leave them below, and we'll see you guys all later. All right, peace.